So this has been asked so many times that I decided to create the tutorial for it. So this is the continuation of the predicted projectile tutorials. And in this uh, videos, we are going to create a line visualization for the projectiles that we are going to launch. So in order to do that, uh, first we need to create a line render on the Canon object, would be fine, or on any other anti-game object should also do. I'm going to put it here on the projectile and then I'm going to set the width to a very small one, a 0 0.2 and add a materials to the line render and put a default line. And we can set the color and this is basically using a uh, gradient but I think uh, yeah we can just use the gradient and set one color if we want to. So for example the first color we can set this to a bright red and we can copy its value the hexadecimal value and on the end here we can paste the values and I'm going to make it a bit uh, transparent so on the top uh, node here let's change this to around 200 and uh, sorry not 20 but it should be 200 and I'm going to go to this point here and set this also to 200 so we have a slight transparent uh, red lines okay so now that we have this let's save the scene first and let's open the projectile script okay so now basically we need to create a couple variables first would be the line renderer and let's just call this line visual and I'm going to create another uh, field and this will be a type of uh, integer and this will be the line segment so this will decide the smoothness of the line and on start I'm going to initialize the line renderer which is the line visual and I'm going to set the position count to the line segment fields here or the line segment variables. Okay, so now that we have created this, we need to create another function that will calculate the position in time based on our initial velocity. Let's just create a new function that will return type of vector tree. Okay, so I'm going to call this calculate position in time and we should pass the initial velocity as a parameter in this method. So let's just type vector3 and let's just call this bo. And we also need to pass the time. Okay, so first we are going to create a new vector3 and this will be the, the horizontal plane velocity, the xz, and we should get the vo, but we are going to zero out the y values. And we are going to create a new vector, and this will be the result. And I'm going to call this, yeah, just call this result. And we are going to set its x and y, uh, sorry, not x and y, x and z value. Using the shoot point position, this is the starting point. And we can use this formula here. So if you see here, we have the position in time equals that uh, initial velocity on x multiplied by time equals, uh, and added by the initial position and so uh, also with the y values y in time equal negative half multiplied by gravity and multiplied by uh, t power of 2 or t quadrant and then gets added by the initial velocity on the y axis multiplied by time and then added by the initial y position so with this formula we can since this is going to be our start position, I'm going to add this and then I'm going to calculate the VO multiple multiplied by time. And for the Y position, we are going to create a new float uh, variable. And this will be, uh, I'm going to create a parenthesis to set the first calculation, which is the half multiplied by the math dot absolute dot physics gravity dot y and then I'm going to multiply this by the time time multiply by time so time uh, power of 2 and then I'm going to add this with the initial y velocity which is the initial velocity uh, the vo dot y and we can multiply this by time And then uh, we are going to add this with the initial position, which is our shoot point position dot y. So now we have this uh, the 
as uh, the y position in time, we can substitute the result y with our s y value. And the last code here, we need to return the result. So now we have this calculation here. We can use this to draw the curve, uh, the line. Okay, so now we we need to create a new method. And let's just call this a visualize. And uh, for the visual, we are going to ask for the initial uh, velocity. Since we need this value here in the calculate post in time. And we are going to loop through our line segment. So let's just set this default to 10. And now uh, we need to create a new vector and just call this position. And let's use the calculate pause in time. And we are going to pass the VO, which is the initial velocity. And for the time, this will be the, our I, our nodes here, I but divided by the maximum value, which is the line segment. And you see that I, sorry, I typed this wrong, but I want to cast the line segment to a float. So we will have a float number for our time. Since I is integer and line segment is integer, if we don't cast this as a float, then we will have a round number, which is an integer. And close this with a semicolon. Now that we have this position, we can set the line segment and oh, sorry not line segment line visual i forget what it's called line visual and set its position and the index we can just insert i because it has uh, the count of line segment so it will uh, fill out this loop here and the next parameter is the position which is we calculate this before and close this so now that we have created this we can run this method after we calculate the velocity. So let's just type visualize here under the calculate velocity line and pass the VO and save this. Okay, so that's all for the script. And if we go back to Unity, we will have a new uh, field on our projectile. Now we need to drag the line renderer. And we can increase to increase the smoothness, but 10, it should be enough and save the scene. And now if we press play, you'll see that we have a line. There you go. We have a line. Sorry, there is a slight mistake here on the calculate position in time. It should be the V X Z dot Y. So the Y value of this new vector should be zero, not the initial velocity and save this. Okay, so now let's go back to Unity and we already set all of the fields here. Once it's finished compiled, let's test this out. Okay, now it's finished. I'm going to play this. And now you see we have a line projection. So if we get close, you'll see that the line will get higher. But if we go further, it will be much lower. And you see if I press the mouse button, you'll see the movement is exactly on that point. Yeah, so that is uh, pretty much how you can do for the line visualization for the predicted projectile. Thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button.